Hello you guys and welcome back to my channel for those of you who are returning. If you are new here visiting for the first time, thank you so much for stopping by. I'm Anita with Anita by Design and here on my YouTube channel you will find step-by-step -step, very detailed sew-alongs, tutorials, pattern reviews, and other sewing related content to help you with your sewing projects. And today I am continuing with a four-part series on the Baby Lock Euphoria cover stitch machine. If you missed the first two episodes, in part one, I did a walkthrough over the entire machine to show you all of the parts. And then in episode two, I showed you all of the accessories that come with the machine. If you missed those, you can start with part one by clicking on this link above, or you can follow the links in the description box below this video where I have linked to both episodes. So today in part three, I'm going to walk you through and show you how to thread the machine and you're going to be amazed at how easy it is. So let's jump right in and get started. Okay, we're going to start by opening up the front of the machine. This is the front cover and it opens by pulling it down. And then the front table has this white tab on the right side and you will just pull it over to the right and it flips down. And the left cover opens by pulling it open to the left. There are instructions printed on the inside of the front cover, just in case you need assistance with threading your machine. But before you start threading, you will need to engage the threading tube by turning this lever down to threading. Then you will turn the hand wheel counterclockwise towards you until the threading tube clicks into place. And so this is the threading tube. And when I turn the hand wheel, you will see what happens. You see that? So you wanna make sure that the threading tube is engaged. Okay, so we're gonna start at the top of the machine threading the looper first, and then we'll thread our needles. Okay, I have placed four thread cones on the machine. The three cones on the left are for the needles, and then this one on the right is for the looper, and that's where we're gonna start. So I'm gonna take my thread, and I'm gonna feed it through the telescopic antenna up top by pulling it through the little metal part. And once we have it through the guide, we're gonna bring it down on the right side of the machine and continue threading. Okay, next we're gonna feed our thread through the opening in this metal part from the front. And then we're gonna take the thread and feed it in the back of the metal tab. And then we're gonna continue feeding the thread through this channel on the side of the machine. and let it fall down to the front. Now that we have the thread fed through the open channel, we're going to take it and feed it behind the metal tab. And now we're ready to feed it through the thread tube. And you wanna make sure that you have a long length of thread, about 22 inches before you feed it into the, the thread looper. So you're gonna take the end of your thread and you're gonna feed about half an inch into this opening. Okay, and then you will press the thread looper button. Okay, and then I'll show you on the other side, there's your thread. And then you will cut this to about four inches Okay, so now our looper is threaded. Next, we will go and thread the needles. Okay, to thread the needles, I've already inserted the three threads through the antenna, the telescopic antenna. So I'm gonna start with my left needle. And there's no particular order that you need to thread your machine in. You don't have to follow an order. If you want to, you can thread your needles first and then thread your looper. It's totally up to you. So I'm starting with the left needle thread and then I'm gonna feed it through this channel. So this is for the left needle 
the C1. This is for the center needle. And then this one is for the right needle. So I'm gonna feed it through this one first and I'm gonna push the thread in until it clicks. And then I'm gonna continue feeding through this opening. Okay, so I'm gonna take my left thread. I'm gonna push it through until it clicks and then continue feeding it through the front channel. I'm, doing, I'm gonna do the same thing with my center needle until it clicks and then feed it through the channel. And then for the right needle, again, I'm gonna push it in until it clicks and then feed it through the front channel. Now let's go to the next step. Okay, now I'm gonna feed all three needles through the little metal hooks on the front. So there's my left needle, my center needle. I'm just feeding them through the back, around the back of the little metal hooks, okay? And then I'm gonna take the needles over this metal hook and I'm gonna start with my left needle and then I'm gonna continue and I'm gonna feed it through this channel here. So I'm going under the hook, up and over the channel and down, okay? Next, I'm gonna take the thread and feed it through the back of this metal hook until it comes out in the center. And then I'm gonna feed it in the back of this metal hook and then this is where I'm going to use my needle threader. So I have my needle threader selector in the C1 position for the left needle. Now I'm going to press down on the needle threader to engage it. And then I'm gonna take my thread and I'm gonna feed it through the opening in the center. Let me go over to the side so you can see. You see? there's an opening here in the middle and I'm gonna feed my thread right through that, that opening, okay? So I'm gonna take my thread and just push it right through that opening and then I'm gonna lift up on the lever and my needle is threaded. All I have to do is pull this down and there my needle is threaded. And I will do the same thing with the other two needles. First, I'm gonna move my selector to C2 for the center needle. I'm gonna go and grab my center needle. I'm gonna feed it through the top of the hook. Then over to the left, I'm gonna go under and then feed it up and over behind the metal hook, behind the other metal hook. Then I will engage my needle threader. I will push the thread in the center of the threader and then lift up on the needle threader and pull my thread through. And the same thing with my right needle. I'm gonna pull it over the middle hook, under this metal hook, and then up and over the channel, behind this metal hook, behind the last metal hook. Switch to C3, which is my right needle. Engage my needle threader. Feed the thread in between the opening and pluck, and there is my thread. So super, super easy. Now my machine is threaded and ready to go. All I have to do is close up the machine. So I'm gonna close the left cover, front table. Make sure that you turn the lever back to surging and close the front table or the front, the front cover and we are ready to sew. Okay, so now I wanna show you how to thread the looper when you're working with threads that won't feed easily 
by using the extraordinaire feature on the machine. So there are the medium weight, some lightweight threads and the medium weight threads feed really well using the extraordinaire feature, but some really fine like monofilament threads, they don't feed easily through this system and heavyweight, like really thick threads, they don't feed easily through either. So let me show you some examples. So this is Madeira and this is the Katona. And as you can see, it's really thick. This is made from an Egyptian cotton and it's really thick. So that may not feed through with the extraordinaire feature easily. So I'm gonna show you how you can feed it with the looper threading tool. And then there is the Decora by Madeira. And you can see this one is thick as well. And this one, it's, it's really slippery. So when I do this, you can see how it unwinds so easily. This is a rayon and it's made from a high quality Bimberg viscose. So this is one that you may wanna use the thread net with because it unravels so easily. But I'm gonna show you how you can feed specialty threads like this through the machine or through the looper without using the extraordinaire feature. So the first thing we're going to do is cut the thread away from the looper and then we're going to pull it out from the eye of the looper on the left side just by pulling it over to the left. Okay, I've placed my spool of thread on the spool pin for the looper. And as you can see, I used the thread net to prevent the thread from unraveling from the bottom of the spool. And then I've threaded it through the telescopic antenna and followed the same threading procedure as with regular thread. So now I'm gonna show you how to use the looper threading tool to feed this thicker thread through the looper. Okay, so this is the looper threading tool and it has a loop on one side and then a straight end on the other side. So we're gonna feed the straight end through the looper threading port. So we're gonna feed it through and we're gonna push it Continue to push it through. Make sure that your lever is in the threading position and continue to push it through until it comes out through the eye of the looper on the left side of the machine. And here you will see the wire coming through. Now, sometimes it will take a couple of tries. If it doesn't come through on the first try, then just pull it out and start over. Okay, now we're gonna go back over to the other side and feed the thread through the looper threading tool. Okay, so you can see our looper threading tool has been fed through up to this point. So now what we're gonna do is feed our thread through the opening of the tool. So make sure you have about 22 inches of thread tail and then take the end of your thread and just feed it through that opening. Feed it, feed it through the eye and then pull it all the way through. Oops. Okay, and then we're gonna go back over to the other side of the machine and we're gonna pull the straight end of the looper tool until the thread comes through the opening and we're gonna continue pulling, feeding the thread through the looper. And I'm gonna hold on to the thread until it feeds through the port. Okay, so I'm gonna grab the straight end of the threading tool and I'm gonna pull and I'm holding on to the thread on the other end and I'm gonna pull until that thread is down into the port. So my thread is in the port. I'm gonna release the thread on the other side and continue pulling until I see the thread. And 
and you want to take your time you don't have to go move too quickly and there the thread has come all the way through so I'm gonna pull that until the end is out and now we have threaded a thicker thread through the looper and at this point you're gonna cut your thread leaving a four inch tail place it inside the tray and you are ready to sew okay now I'm gonna show you another option for threading specialty threads through the thread looper and this time I'm gonna use the Madeira Katona thread and you can see that this one is pretty thick so I've placed the thread onto the spool pin and Again, I've threaded it through the antenna, down through the threading mechanism. And this time, instead of using the threading tool, we're gonna create a threading cradle using regular serger thread. You also wanna make sure that your presser foot is in the up position before you start threading. Now you wanna cut a length of thread about 44 inches and fold it in half. You wanna make sure that when, you, when your thread is folded in half that you have at least 22 inches so that when you feed it through the looper, it will come out on the other end through the eye of the looper. So what we're doing, after you fold it in in half, you're gonna have one side and you'll have a loop on one side and then the straight double ends on the other side. So what we're doing is exactly the same thing that we did with the looper threading tool, but we're using serger thread this time. So you're gonna feed the straight ends through the opening, through the port, and then we're gonna press the thread looper button to push it through to the other side. So we're gonna feed through about an inch of the straight end. Okay, and then we're gonna hold on to the loop end with our left hand, and then we're gonna press the looper, the thread looper button until it feeds through to the other side. Now you wanna check on the other side to make sure that the thread did feed through the eye of the looper. And here we can see that our thread is inside of the tray, so we're good. Now we're gonna go and feed the specialty thread through the cradle. Now that we have the two threads linked, we're gonna go to the other side and we're gonna pull the thread until our specialty thread feeds all the way through the looper. Okay, I'm gonna start pulling the thread until the specialty thread comes through and I'm holding on to that specialty thread until it feeds through the port. And there is our specialty thread. And you can see the difference in the thickness as it came through. Okay, and once again, you will cut off four inches or cut, a, cut it off so that you will have a four inch tail and you are ready to sew. And that's how easy it is to feed a thicker thread through the looper using a thread cradle. Now keep in mind when you are using the thicker threads, they are to be used in the looper only because they won't fit through the eyes of the needles. And the specialty thread guide chart is really helpful when you're trying to determine how to use the specialty threads with this machine. So you have the three different columns here. The first column is for top stitching, buttonhole twist, uh, medium weight. And then we have woolly nylon, medium weight, and then metallic threads, lightweight. So based on the type of stitch you're doing, it will tell you if you're going to be using that thread in the chain looper only, in the needles only, or both. So for a two thread chain stitch where you're using needle C1, C2, or C3, then it tells you if you're gonna use a woolly nylon, then you're gonna use that thread in the chain looper only. If you're gonna use metallic thread, then you're gonna use that thread in the needles only. So let's say you're gonna do a four thread triple cover stitch. 
So if you're going to use this stitch and you're using a top stitching thread, then you're going to use that thread in both the needle and the chain looper. If you're using metallic thread, then you're going to use it in the chain looper only when you're doing a four thread triple cover stitch. So this is a very helpful resource when you're using specialty threads. Well, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If so, make sure to hit the like button down below and stay tuned for part four, where I will be doing a little sewing on the Euphoria to show you how it works. And once again, I want to thank my sponsor, Baby Lock, for sponsoring this video. And I've included a link in the description box below if you're interested in purchasing the Euphoria. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.